Alright guys, since I'm not that sick anymore and I can actually talk without it hurting me, I decided that I'll continue the how-to series for Payday 2, and this will be how-to stealth. Now I will begin with talking about how, like I'm going to show you the skills real quick, and why each skills are necessary, and the different kinds of builds you can have. <coughs> Now this is my primary stealth build and I'm going to tell you the skills that I feel like are necessary and ones I just have for either filler or just because I had leftover points. So Sprinter, Cat Burglar, Cleaner Aced, and Cleaner Basic, Shinobi Basic, both the ECM skills, and Lockpicking Expert. And camera loop, those to me aren't mandatory, but they are highly important. Sprinter, just for the fact that you can move faster. So if you need to run past a guard real quick and your stamina comes back and you have a longer stamina, it helps. Cat Burglar for high slide shadow ray when you jump down from the building onto the crates, that really helps. Cleaner, for those of you who don't have the body bag asset from Fugitive, you can buy as many assets as you want with body bag. Each one carries three, just like the typical one would. And Shinobi, just so you can croc, uh, crouch and walk faster without having to always sprint. ECM skills, just for doors and being able to block pagers. That's really what these two are for. Lock picking. Mostly this is for safes and it's nice to just be able to open doors faster. And camera loop, um, if you have to kill somebody and they're in front of the camera, loop that camera, kill them, move the body, and you'll be perfectly okay. That's why. Now, moving target, silent killer, martial arts, and chameleon, those are just there because I had leftover points. Since I use this build during loud, that's why I have Silent Killer. And to be honest, I originally had this aced and I didn't have this at all. But I prefer being able to sprint backwards if I end up running up to a guard or something. That's why I have it aced. That way if I'm sprinting, a guard happens, I can just run backwards and not get detected. At least that's the idea. Martial Arts was literally just to get up to these higher tiers. Um... Dead presidents, more money, fast hands is necessary on every build, in my knowledge. Okay, that's the ghost tree. Fugitive, we have hidden blade aced, that way you can kill enemies silently. Sixth sense, so you can find out what's around you and pick up items that are in casing mode. Running gun, again, the movement speed, I like to move fast. I have this ace so I can kill a lot of civilians and not get dead broke off of it. And I have the Undertaker just because sometimes the asset placements on some of the highest for the body bag isn't good and it's nice to always be able to place one if you're not close to it. Enforcer, the most important skill in the game, having Transporter. Now in Stealth, it's not necessary to be able to have it aced, but Basic and any Stealth build should do just fine for you. Now Cable Guy, Control Freak, and Spotter are very, very nice to have. If you're not like me and you don't want to kill civilians you can use this and just have everyone on the ground as long as you're shooting as long as you're making noise doing whatever they will stay on the ground and not call the police <coughs> cable guy that way you can tie up the um tie up hostages get your crew members back this is a mandatory skill no matter what build you are using spotter that way uh spy cams and that's what spotter you can buy on some height, that way you uh, have an idea of where guards are <coughs> when they're moving around. Dominator, just so if you get in a tight situation, you can spam the R1 button on PS4 and put someone on their knees. Endurance, again, stamina, moving speed. So this is my primary stealth build, right? Now, other stealth, oh, well, wrong button. Other stealth builds you might use are, I have a buzzsaw stealth build. Now, Ghost, you'll notice I have Shinobi Basic, Fast Hands Basic, and Cleaner Aced, and Cat Burglar Aced. 
Again, I feel like you need these on stealth builds. I also have Hidden Blade for the Silent Killing, Sixth Sense, and uh, Winston Wolf for the extra body back to carry. And obviously this isn't just a stealth build. I can run it loud, which is why I have this. Um, Enforcer is completely tanked up. The only skills out of this tree that you need for a stealth or a build that you would use for it is the saw. But you should not make an enforcer stealth build. It's not a thing to do. Um, Berserker. I have this. That way if I can down myself. I. <coughs> <coughs> I can hit each saw box one time. And open it up that way. That way it's quicker and easier to do. And then Mastermind. I have the three primary ones. I also have Dominator Ace. That way if I run this build solo. Which I've been doing quite often. I can get people down and then Joker that way I'm not running with just completely useless AI. Now endurance again for the stamina. The last build that I use for stealth is the technician build. This one demolition man, combat engineer, and shape charges basic, you don't need an ace, basic are the most important ones. Silent breaching and eh, you don't need to have an ace, but I do anyway and having drill skills on really any technician build is kind of an It's kind of a good thing to have if you've seen my how to see board video You would know how I feel about that again under ghost. I have shinobi basic sprinter and cleaner I don't have cat burger on this one um, I think I just forgot to buy it or I might have taken it off for fast hands Which since I run this build loud is more necessary and then I have Hidden Blade, Sixth Sense, and Winston Wolf all aced in this build. Again, I have three three skills which I feel are Spotter and C Cable Guy on every build is really nice. But since I do use this build for stealth quite often, having the basic version of Control Freak is helpful. But the special assets to be able to buy are really nice. Um, I can get my teammates back and just so I can run faster. Now, that is the meat of this. Weapons, anything that keeps your concealment quite low is helpful. You can use this. The highest your concealment should be is this. I can run this, this, I think this, yeah. And I can't run that. But really, if you can, run a Kimbo. If you can, run a Kimbo, or just run a low concealment shotgun. This is not low concealment. Um, I have the long barrel on here which amps it up and for secondary really anything that has low concealment um, and a suppressor obviously that would be important okay so that is the loadout and that is also the skills now let me show you how to apply it in gameplay Alright, so we've talked about the skills and we've talked about the weapons. Alright, the most second most important thing besides the weapons and skills is dealing with the mechanics of the game. And a few tips that you should probably know. Now, when it comes to mechanics, uh, Payday 2 does not necessarily have a very well-rounded stealth mechanic. Um, just me personally, like the shit I just did right there, that's not... That's not right, dude. You shouldn't be able to do some shit like that. Now, there are four things you should do in every stealth heist. Now, in this one, you're not going to see me do one of them. But over time, there's a couple things you should learn how to do. One, the guard's rate of detection. Now, guards, for some reason, different guards have different uh, fields of view and they detect you faster. And sometimes they can see you through stuff and sometimes they won't. Like if I had a bag where I'm standing at right now, behind the bushes, a guard would have seen that. But for some reason, me standing right there, they won't notice that. Now, a second thing that you should probably keep in mind is knowing your map layout and all possible spawns for loot. There's also the fact of pre-planning and which path you should take on certain heights. Now... <coughs> The clip I'm using right here is from Shadow Rage. Just where you want the loot to be dropped off at. 
uh, body bags, spy cams, all that stuff. Like, where do you need this to be to help yourself out best? And how is it going to benefit you in the end game? Now, this isn't necessarily a important thing, but it does help when you're playing on higher difficulties. What I try to do is run a couple games on normal or overkill. Just if I do finish, I want to get payout for it. That's just me. And try to find out all the different vari uh, variables of loot spawning. And also the fact that guard patterns. Because outside, you have the choice of either having a stationary guard, sitting by the front gate, no guard, a camera, or both. Um, a camera above the garage, guard patterns outside. There are certain things you want to be aware of. Also, just like this heist right here, you want to be aware of your objectives. Or anything that can help you reach your objectives, like finding crowbars, to open crates and shadow raid, key cards, and other such things. Now, the alarm box, you want to find out where that can spawn at and all the different locations. Because, when again, when you're running on higher difficulties, it makes it easier and less on time when you get to run through a map. Now, um, another thing you should probably have is the skills, which I went over earlier, so I won't go into detail about it again. But each heist um, benefits from a different skill set. This heist, I would have typically worn the C4 skill, just because it makes it more beneficial to find out where all the guards are on the map. And since this is a very t close quarters area, it's very beneficial to know where people are at at all times. Especially when it comes to moving loot in and out the building. Uh, f I think this, is the, this, is, this right here is another important factor. Is where you can store loot at. Every map you should have at least one or two locations where you know you can store loot at. At any given case. Now, I can store loot on this map in this corner right here in front of me. Uh, in the warehouse above me where the camera room currently is at. Um, in Shadow Raid, when you go upstairs, you can throw it behind the staircase. And you can also throw it downstairs in the sewer area. Just to give a few ideas of what I mean. Um, certain heists, like bank heists, unless the vault is in the back of the map. You shouldn't be storing loot any place until you clear out the map. Which is actually beneficial in some areas. And also there's another question asked, when is it important or when should you go stealth? Well, this is more of a factor of your team and your playstyle. Uh, certain heists are easier to accomplish in stealth. And certain heists also have a higher payout when you go in stealth. Which is one of the higher values of doing it. <coughs> now, stealthing solo versus stealthing with people, um, I would recommend that you don't stealth with more than two people, three at the max, um, only due to the fact that desync and you have to keep tabs on where everyone is at, and you have to really coordinate with your team, and unless you're in a party, because we don't have in-game chat at the moment this video is made. Then I would like to say that coordinating with people, especially randoms, is very difficult to do. Now, mechanics. I already talked about how the guards spot you. And that is kind of tedious. Because you have certain moments where it feels like a guard will not notice you at all and then you have certain times where a guard will have eyes in the back of his head and that's kind of a hard thing to deal with now a lot of players tend to go passive or save their pages to where they're in a situation uh, I'm gonna use this map as an example it would be more beneficial to clear out the side where the vault is at or the safe room is at that way you can traverse that area without having to go through any real issues and difficulties about it. Um, it does make it easier because you have that one safe route you know you can take. Yeah, there's still going to be like one guard over there maybe depending on if you get the camera guy or not. Which with most heists like Shadow Raid, the Bank, bank Heist, you kind of have to do it because of where the cam cameras are set at. 
especially if you play on higher difficulties like Death Wish, Mayhem, or One Down, which we don't have on PS4 yet. Taking out the camera guy is a necessity. Or, if you can pull off ECM Rush on it, then do that. But, you have these skills to worry about. And... Also, about shitty RNG, which Payday is obviously known for. Um, some runs can be easy as hell, and some runs can be highly difficult. That is kind of just a, a matter of RNG, because <coughs> having a high number of static guards can make an, a map as simple as Shadow Raid turn extremely complicated, especially depending on where the static guards are located. And... Uh, that will conclude this how to stealth video um, I will let the well I won't let it all the way run through but I'm gonna let the ending to this heist run through and then uh, no that's just about it actually uh, have a nice day guys chance I can leave early today? No? Shit. Stay back. Found it. Look out. Get down on the ground. Now, eight key cards. Two of them. Use them on the door. Come on. Get down. Stay there. Every hostage you take slows the cops Follow down. Me. Hey, hey, watch where you're shooting. It's a white box van you'll be looking for. Be trusted. They'll be inside with the product. Won't they be suspicious? Why look like a setup? <sighs> I'm losing millions in product on this thing. You won't doubt me. Guards, stay back. What are they gonna do? Try to shoot their way out? Security cam over here. Guards, stay back.
Watch out. John. Stay back. Guard, stay back. Watch out, John. Guard, stay back. Look out, guard. Guard, stay back. 